Fala galera, estamos aqui para o nosso primeira nova talk internacional com o Odo René Obervenoir, para eu não errar o nome dele, eu trouxe. <risos> ok? E esse vai ser todo em inglês, né galera? Afinal, ele quer entender o que a gente está falando. Like he said. <risos> I, I want to ask you uh, just a simple uh, thing. You did MASH. MASH, yeah. Okay. And you just did uh, Boston Legal. Yes. What changed your career in these decades? Well, oh yeah. Well, MASH was in 1970. Mm -hmm. And Boston Legal <laughs> was in... <laughs> 2000. 2000 something. <laughs> Five, six, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. I, well, my career. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a long time. Um, well, MASH was the first film that I did where I was. I didn't have a large part, but I was in the film from the beginning to the end. Before that, I was working only in the theater, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, I had done little tiny, tiny one day coming in and do a couple of lines in a in two other movies while I was working in the theater. So M Mash was a big, big deal, but of course it was not only was it a big deal because I got to be there watching the entire process being part of the whole story uh, but um, because it was a big success yeah. because it was a hit you know you can do incredible work in a movie that nobody ever watches and it doesn't do you any good you can do a small part like Dago Red mm -hmm. in a film that everybody sees and that that is important from that I began to do more and more film and television and ultimately because I have a family and I, I settled on just really working in television and uh, so MASH <clears throat> was incredibly important to establishing me in an aspect of the business and then Boston Legal in a way is like a book end it's like I mean I've done many things since uh, Boston Legal but that was the last series that I did where I was a regular character and um, and it also was a hit was a, a big success and um, and I was very honored to be chosen to be part of it because I thought it was important work uh, sociologically, <laughs> politically. Yeah. It made very important statements. I wish it were still here today to talk about where we are today. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we see. Anyway. So. <laughs> So, and, uh, and you worked four more times with Robert Altman. Yeah, Robert Altman became, and all for my whole life, uh, became uh, a very important influence and a dear friend. Yes, I did um, MASH and Brewster, then, uh, Brewster McLeod, mm -hmm. which was not a big success. It was very, um, very amusing. Very funny, silly yeah. film. That film, I only worked one day on it. I went in and we shot everything and then he put it into the movie. Uh, then I did McCabe and Mrs. Miller, which I believe is his greatest film. Mm. Not because I was in it, <laughs> but uh, I think it was a beautiful, uh, I th thought it was just a great combination of his talent and um, because before that he had never worked with stars, big stars like Warren Beatty mm -hmm. and Julie Christie. <clears throat> and then I did a little film uh, called Images. Amazing. In, in, which is a beautiful, beautiful film, uh, which maybe 
has the most beautiful score, musical score that uh, John Williams has ever written. Yeah. I mean, yeah. beautiful. And uh, Susanna York, spectacular. Yeah, Robert Altman, very important to my life. Yeah. I saw you in a lot of things, actually. You was the peer priest in The Patriot, right? The in The yeah, Patriot, in the yeah. Patriot. Very, very nice. Uh, and I really like to search for the Star Trek actors. But I remember when I saw Fraser and I thought to myself, yeah. <laughs> he was on Star Trek, and on Star Trek you put the guys in every kind of costume. In Fraser, they you on a little pink outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What he's talking about <laughs> is that uh, I did, um, I think, two, two episodes, two episodes two of Fraser, a very funny show, um, and uh, and one of the the last the last episode, I I come to the door dressed in the woman's nightgown, <laughs> yeah. and now everybody remembers that. How oh, beautiful my legs are! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you show <sure>? your legs. <laughs> Actually, Kelsey Grammer was a big Star Trek fan. He did a yeah. spot in Next Generation. Yeah, Kelsey was... Um, uh, well, Kelsey, you know, it, what an extraordinary career to have played the same character for 22 years. Yeah. For 11 years, years on yeah. Cheers, Cheers yeah. 11 years on Frasier, and for it to remain fresh yeah. and for him to be connected to it, uh, a big achievement. Yeah, a wonderful actor. I told you a couple of years ago, you're not going to remember that I teach law and I use Boston Legal in my classes, oh. right? And so I enjoy a lot one scene that you have with Armin Schirmerman. And I was wondering, that was put in the episode just for you two can have the parkour again? <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Many people have... Um, pointed that out. They go, oh yes, well, because you were in Star Trek. But you know, I, I, it's not clear to me that David Kelly mm. even knew about me and uh, oh, oh, Star Trek. Right. I, I don't know whether he even, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm sure he knew that Bill Shatner was <laughs> Captain Kirk. But as far as I know, there may have been one tiny reference Uh, to cling on or some kind of joke that might have referred to it but he didn't want so I don't think he wrote that scene between Armin and me to remind people of our relationship in Star Trek it's not his ego is too strong he wouldn't want to it's all he created this yeah, so he, your character in Boston League was actually very nice, very well constructed, especially. But in the end, you're not uh, shining so much. You're outside the series. Why? What happened? Right. We love so much your character. Well, the, it's a very simple answer to that. My character was not in the original, in the, the first four episodes of Boston Legal. Mm -hmm. They had already shot them. And David Kelly said, we need a character who can um, be the, the rational, the, the one who makes everybody try to behave because everybody's so crazy that we need one straight ahead character. And um, so then they hired me and they put me in to all the four episodes that they had already shot, just little bits and pieces so that I was in it from the beginning. But when, as the show went on, They were always looking for Candace Bergen, mm -hmm. that character, and they needed that character. When Candace came to the show, there really was no more Space. reason. There was no more reason for my character to be there every time. And so, D David, I was so grateful that they even thought of me. So when David and I talked, He's, I was already in the last season getting kind of bored with it because there was nothing really for my character to do and I sensed that there really was no more use for the character. And I'm, and I, you know, I've been around a long time and I really 
<clears throat> it's not like my life depended on, oh, I have to stay in the television show. So we talked, we had a wonderful talk, and, um, and so, so we decided that, you know, he said, I don't want to waste your time and, and make you feel like you're not being served well as an actor. And, and I responded to that very positively because I did not, I don't want to suddenly be just standing around with nothing to do. I, I must say it was James Spader when, so that season, at the end of that season, they dispensed with, they removed um, Lark. Uh, yeah. Mark Lark. Valley, yeah. Julie Bowen, yeah. Constance Zimmer, and me, four, of, four major characters. Yeah. They put them away. <coughs> and, um, and in the case of Mark Valley and Julie and Constance, they just sort of went away. And it was James Spader who said, "Don't you can't get rid of, uh, you can't get rid of him, oh. My, the character, not me." Paul. Paul. But he said, <laughs> "We we need Paul, we need Paul." So just kick him upstairs. Yeah. So I went upstairs with the Chinese, and, <laughs> and I came down to end the show. Yeah. So I got revenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here in Brazil, you I watch you in Benson. Uh, Boston Legal, uh, another uh, many things, of course. Although uh, I think it was you are in the air so many seasons, seven seasons. Seven seasons, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm so grateful to, to meet you here. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful to be here. And um, thank you. And I'll see everybody, I hope, and we'll have a more conversation, more talk. Thank you. Okay. É isso aí, galera. Curte, compartilha, comenta, se inscreve, hashtag Odo no Brasil. E é isso aí. Falou!